This is a new iPhone 14 Pro. It's running the new iOS 16, which definitely brings lots of big changes to iPhone. But by default, the user experience is far from optimal. So here are the first 10 things I did to transform it from this to this, which is not only much prettier, but also enables some critical features that provides a much better experience. One of the new features that really changed how I use the iPhone is the lock screen widgets. Of course, they can display things like the battery of Bluetooth devices and the weather, but my favorite use case for these new widgets is a shortcut to an app that I use often. In iOS, the lock screen actually isn't dismissed automatically when the phone is unlocked. So after picking up the phone and unlocking it with Face ID, I often have to shuffle my hands down or use another hand to swipe up to unlock the phone. But now with an app shortcut as a widget on the lock screen, Screen, you can just click on the shortcut and it will automatically dismiss the lock screen and then take you to the app. It's very quick, as you can see, and there also isn't any visible redirecting or pop-ups, like with using custom app icons. You can get this shortcut widget with a few different apps. I tested Launcher, Top Widgets, and Widgie, and I found that the ones from Widgie works the best. It launches the app the fastest. And how you set it in Widgie is you go to the Explore tab and then go under Lock and find the app launcher that you want and then just import it. And then go to the Manage page and add the imported widget there. And yeah, that's it. Now you can add this onto your lock screen. So I made multiple lock screens because in iOS 16, you can have more than one. And I found some pretty cool lock screen widgets from third-party apps. One of them is Widgetsmith. In this app, you can make text widgets, which go at the very top next to the date and also circular and rectangular widgets, which go underneath the time. And for each of these, there's lots of options like time, date, even moon phase. You can also make your own custom text and photo widgets as well. I used a week number text widget and also this sun path one. I love how it looks. And I added a photo widget of my dog too. And for these photo widgets, so they will end up black and white. And I found that lighter wallpapers tend to make them look more washed out. So a dark wallpaper will probably be better for these. And another cool app is called Top Widgets. This app has a bunch of different options, but my favorite are these animated ones. And if you click on more, you can basically search any GIF that's on Jiffy. So there's definitely a ton of options. I picked out these ones. I think they look super cute, but there are also some animated ones that span two widgets and they look pretty funny. And the rest of my widgets are all from Apple and some of the default ones are really good. For example, the battery widget, there's a small and a big one. It shows either the battery of my phone or my other accessories like AirPods. And it's actually very useful for keeping track of what I need to charge. The other one that I love is the weather one. There's a whole bunch of different options like temperature, sunrise, sunset, even rain percentage. These widgets give me a good amount of information just at a glance. And I think they look very nice and clean too. But there are also weather widgets for the top text widget. I really like the sunrise, sunset one and also the location one, which includes a cute little icon for the weather condition. And if you tap on a widget, it'll be brought directly to the app associated with it. And if you press on the time, you can change its color, which also affects all the lock screen widgets. By default, it's this translucent white color, but if you want the time to pop out more, you can set it to this more opaque white. Of course, there are many other colors to choose from as well, including a color picker tool if you want to get a specific color from your wallpaper. And there are also a few different font options too. You might've noticed that this background is also new. So this is actually a default one called astronomy and it's probably one of my favorites. It shows where you are on earth and it follows the time of day. So the lighting does change and you can see the sun rise and set. I think it's pretty cool, but you can actually get a closer up earth or the moon or the entire solar system. Honestly, this transition thing between these swipes is pretty fun to look at in and of itself. And other than that, there's also a weather lock screen. It shows the live weather of your location and the animations actually look super nice. I think it looks very realistic. There's a few others like these collection designs and these emojis, but of course you can also use your own pictures for the lock screen. And with the photo shuffle option, you can set multiple pictures to rotate through. And if your picture has some sort of
sort of prominent subject in it, like these ones, you can try moving it in front of the time and this depth effect will kick in. I do like this look. The subject pops out more and the time also looks better incorporated into the picture. There are also these filters that you can apply to the pictures. And as for the photo rotation options, there's daily, hourly, on lock, and on tap. I went for the on tap one just so that I can very quickly tap to the photo that I'm feeling the most that day. Now, the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max also have the always on display feature, which shows a dim version of the lock screen wallpaper. If you'd rather the always on display background just be black like it is on Android phones, unfortunately, there's no straight up option to do it in iOS. But you can set a pure black picture along with all the other photos that you want as a wallpaper using the photo shuffle. And then I'd recommend setting them to rotate on tap so that you can very quickly switch to the black wallpaper and get an always on display with a black background. Besides the wallpaper, the time and widgets show up on the always on display as well. And they really pop out. So they're very easy to see when the phone is just sitting on my desk like this. And it's pretty nice. I've tested the always on displays effect on battery life. And with a colorful wallpaper and all the widgets, it drained 9% over 12 hours. A black wallpaper does save a little bit of battery. It drained 20% less, but that's only 2% less over 12 hours. Overall, I love the iPhone's always on display and the amount of battery that it drains isn't a big concern for me. So I'll be keeping it on, but you can toggle it off in the display set. Settings. And one thing to know is that the lock screens that have the depth effect applied to the wallpaper cannot have any widgets underneath the time or else the depth effect will be gone. So you can't have both. I feel like this doesn't super make sense. Like why can I have the option to add widgets onto my flower? But anyways, that's pretty much it for the lock screen. When you click done, it will ask you to set a home screen and this will be the home screen for this specific lock screen. If you make another lock screen, it will ask you to set a home screen again. And when you switch lock screens, the home screen will switch too. I've been really liking just setting the home screen as a blurred version of the lock screen, but of course you can choose a different picture or choose a simpler color or gradient. There are also some new notification settings in iOS 16. Now they roll in from the bottom and you also have this stack view. It's more compact than the traditional list view and I do like it. Pretty much anything that shows on the lock screen will show on the always on display as well, including notifications. Because of this, you might consider changing some notification previews. In the settings, you can set a default behavior for each app's notification preview, but you can also go into each app individually to change the preview setting, as well as decide whether they show up on your lock screen and always on display or not. And another new thing is that you can link lock screens to a specific focus too. And something interesting is that if you go into the options, you can toggle on the dim lock screen. This will make your lock screen very blurred and dim. And when it goes to the always on display, the background will be completely black. So I guess this is another way to get the black always on display background. And the next thing that I did was customize my home screen with some widgets. I used the Widgie app again, but this time under the home section. I could build my own widgets from scratch here, but that's too much work. So instead, I just went to the explore tab to browse ones that other people made. And there are some really good ones in here that are super unique. You can't search in here, which is a bit unfortunate, but there are these filters. So hopefully they'll help you find what you want faster. I ended up using this one, which shows the date, the battery level and the temperature. It looks super clean and I love it. The second one here shows the calendar and the weather. And then on my other page, I have one that shows the time. It kind of mimics the iOS 16 lock screen. So I thought that was pretty fun. And the last one here is this like campy woodsy one. It actually changes from day to night when I tap on it. And it's made only with emojis, which I thought was pretty cool. And these two widgets at the top look like they're transparent, but they're actually not because Apple doesn't allow that. Instead, their backgrounds just perfectly matches the wallpaper. And there's a very easy way to set it up in the Widgie app. But this also means if if you switch home screens, then these transparent widgets will get messed up. So if you want to switch lock screens, but keep the same home screen, then just make sure that for each lock screen, you're setting the same exact home screen photo for all of them. I have some iPhone 14 Pro cases here, thanks to Casetify, today's video sponsor. All of the cases come in 100% recyclable packaging. I have the Impact, Ultra Impact, and the new Bounce case. The Impact and Ultra Impact case offers up to 8.2 feet and 11.5 feet drop protection, respectively. 
they are lined with Casetify's EcoShock Tech on the inside edges. And the Ultra Impact case has extra corners with a twister design, which improves on even tension distribution to avoid cracking. The Bounce case offers up to 21.3 feet drop protection. It's not only lined with the EcoShock Tech on the inside edges, but also in an X pattern on the back. It also has expanded corners that are equipped with compression ribs and air cavities. These cases are also MagSafe compatible, and there are all sorts of prints, so you can pick your favorite case design to match with your phone and style. You can even customize a case with your own monogram or name. And now let's do a drop test with the iPhone 14 Pro in the bounce case, which has up to 21.3 feet drop protection. And as you can see, my phone is still perfectly fine. You can also get screen protectors, camera lens protectors, and phone straps to carry your phone hands-free. Go to casetify.com slash created by Ella today to get 15% off your order. From prints to customization, there's something for everyone. And for my other widgets, I used Widgetsmith again. In this app, you can make all sorts of small, medium, and large widgets. There's photos, time, date, and you can change up the colors and the font. I made mine purple to match with my home screen background, and they're all in this stack. I have a week number, a sunrise sunset, and a sun path widget. And actually, underneath these aesthetic widgy widgets, I put more functional ones that are just the default from Apple. So I have a batteries widget, which is great because it simultaneously shows me the battery level of my phone and all the connected accessories. I also have a calendar here and a big weather one, which is just so detailed. I love being able to see all this information at a glance. I really like these widget sacks because I can have my phone look super clean and nice, but still be very functional. But one quick thing to note about the widget stacks is that if the widget suggestions is on, which it is by default, then occasionally a suggested widget will just kind of like slip in without you knowing. I found this pretty annoying, so I turned this thing off for all my stacks. And the next few things that I did are just to make using the phone easier. I customized my control center in the settings. I think lots of super useful control options like dark mode toggle, screen recording are not here by default. So this is something that I always do on a new iPhone. And finally in iOS, you can see the exact battery percentage at the top, but this actually isn't on by default. So I toggle that on in the settings. And for the keyboard, now you can toggle on haptics for the default keyboard but I actually prefer to use Gboard. I can access my numbers by pressing and holding on the top row instead of having to switch pages, which is just so much faster. And you can also toggle on haptics for Gboard in its keyboard settings. And now I have a few tricks that I wanna share. So I've set a shortcut to the camera app by tapping the back of my phone. This can be done in the accessibility settings and then touch and then back tap. As you can see, there's a few different things that you can set the tapping to do. And you can also set two different things for double and triple tap. On my Android phone, I had an extra dim toggle, which let me dim the screen even more than the minimum brightness. And that was quite good for using my phone in super dark environments. And I wanted a thing like extra dim on the iPhone too. There isn't a a direct toggle like there is on Samsung, but if you go into accessibility and then zoom and then toggle on the zoom, now you can triple tap the screen with three fingers to bring up the zoom menu and then select the choose filter and tap low light. And as you can see, this makes the screen much dimmer. Now, iOS 16 also added some new features to the photo app. And probably the coolest thing is that you can lift subjects out of photos. The background is just erased and you can drop it directly into another app or copy it and then paste it. And this works on all kinds of subjects, not just people. The masking is also very well done most of the time. So this is definitely a very impressive feature. Another thing is now to access the recently deleted folder, you will need face ID unlock. I think this is great for improved security. And if if you edit a photo, you can paste those edits to other photos too. This is something that many photo editing apps already had, but it's good that the default app finally has it too. And there are also a few other useful new iOS features that you should know about. Now you can edit and unsend in the Messages app. For editing, you can do it within 15 minutes. And for unsending, you have to do it within two minutes. But do note that this doesn't work if the other person isn't on iOS 16. So I feel like this won't be a surefire way to edit and unsend messages until probably a while later when most people are on iOS 16. And now Face ID can work in the landscape mode, which is nice. For the Wi-Fi setting, now you can actually copy the Wi-Fi password. This will probably make it much easier to share Wi-Fi with your guests. And another really cool thing is that live text now works for videos as well. So if there are text in videos, you can select that and copy it. So yeah, that's everything. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.